positive solution oriented stories. And it's not just like, yay, the kitten in the tree got saved stories. It's did, did real. Did that happen? Did that really happen? I, I want to know. And now, coming to you from the K2 Studios in San Diego, California, it's the world famous Chris and Christine Show. Hey, what's happened, everybody? How you doing today out there? I am Chris. And I'm Christine, and welcome to episode 66 of the Chris and Christine Show. Do 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 how are you doing <laughs> hey, hey that was uh quite a little jingle that you put together there well you know i am an instrument of all instruments i can uh, <laughs> and uh and all that speaking good stuff. of which you haven't pulled out your guitar lately i know i gotta figure out where the uh it's over there in the corner i gotta figure out how to play that yeah it's getting a little bit dusty well thank you for listening to our podcast we both really really appreciate this on this lovely saturday it is a fantastic Saturday, and we are excited to be back with you with another fantastic episode. Thank you for everybody who listened to last week's special episode for Wedding Week. Right. It was very nice of the 10 Steps Further podcast to let us have that audio to play for you guys. If you have not heard it already, we just slapped it onto our podcast, and bada boom, bada bing, there you go. Yes, it's fantastic. So, Chris, how are you doing this week? Well, I am doing lovely. The weather has been great, although it has been a little colder now. We are starting to slip into winter. We are slipping a little bit into the, um, you know, down down to... Uh, winter? Pa- winter, right? <laughs> San Diego winter, which is like fake winter, so we'll call it finter. Well, you know, it does get cold at night, you know. Which I could do it in the fireplace and stuff, you oh, know. Oh, I know. I love that so much. But what I was going to say was, we are recording this right after Thanksgiving. Yeah. We just had Thanksgiving uh, on Thanksgiving, Thursday. Right. This happens to be the Saturday right after that. And it feels really weird not having the mall open to do the whole Black Friday uh, sales. I've never been a big fan of Black Friday. Have you ever done that, Christine? Uh, Yes. I was religious. I have been every year Black Friday shopping. No way. Oh, yes. Like the legit I go out all night. I don't think that I did it last year when I was here. Maybe I did. I can't quite remember. But I have always always, always been a Black Friday shopper. And quite honestly, I didn't even do the online Black Friday shopping. I'm trying to figure out. No, no, no. Online. There's no online Black Friday shopping. It's the uh, Cyber Monday. No, everybody started their deals on Black Friday because uh, maybe they'll have better ones for Cyber Monday. But because regular businesses couldn't open, they all started doing them online. But I am really trying hard to find out how I can do more to support small businesses. And today happens to be Small Business Saturday, which is Wait, the opposite of Black Friday. Today is Black Friday? Yeah, Small today? Business Saturday. I thought that was the following Saturday. No, it's the day after Black Friday. Jeez, so- I, I can't keep up with what's what now. All I know is that we just had Thanksgiving. We are slipping into December. We are slipping into everybody's getting their Christmas trees up. Hint, hint. Including like, us? Yes, including Christine. I was at work yesterday and I come back to the house and Christine has got the tree up and the stockings up. And the only thing she didn't do, which I probably got to do, is the outside of the house, which is decorating. I with- never do the outside. The inside, of course you don't. The, I got to do it. The warm, fuzzy inside is my business. Right. All decked up for the holidays. I yep. love it. I and love I went it. and I picked up the littles early from their mom's house and brought them over because Ezekiel is still here with us. And so the boys were hilarious decorating the Christmas tree. They put on Despacito and a bunch of other mariachi music and they were like, dancing Totally around. not related to Christmas. I know. And they were so hilarious, but they were happy to be back together. They'd been apart for a week because of the wedding and the honeymoon, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But it was really fun, even though they were driving me batty, to have them all here. And you know what I did for the first time, Chris? What's that, babe? I sat on the chair and I just handed them the ornaments and everything and they did everything except for the star. No way. So they put up the all the decorations on yes, the tree? Yes, and the tree All looks, by themselves? Yes, and it looks fantastic. No way. Yeah. Really? You know, when I'm not going to... They didn't like blump, you know, put them all together in like one little bunch? Like no, bunch they actually up. would help correct each other. Like Mason was putting three or four on one branch. Oh, one branch. And then <laughs> Jacob was like, Mason, you've got to spread it out. You can't... You can only put one on a branch. And so... They, I would hand them each like one or two ornaments at a time, and then they would go to different places. At first, 
they were competing to see who could do the most ornaments at the top of the tree. And it was so funny. What, like who could reach the highest? Kind yes. Of thing? But then the bottom was bare. So we had to change <laughs> that course. <laughs> Well, that's great. I love the uni, uni decorate and getting the whole tr- Christmas tree up and all the all the Christmas vibes going. Although I don't really get into the Christmas spirit so much until I really get in December. We are technically still in November right now, but I like to get my Christmas groove on. Probably I say uh, early to mid uh, December. I think the problem is is that if I go hardcore too early into Christ- Christmas music, yeah, is that. I start to burn out. Yeah. And by the time Christmas comes around, I'm so over it. And I'm like, I don't want to hear another Christmas jingle or anything. Right. So I think that... I get that. But I'm one of those that the day after Thanksgiving, I have to decorate. And the reason is because I go back to work shortly after. And then I work all the way until the winter break. And so for me, it's like, it gets me in the holiday spirit for a couple of days before I have to go back to reality and work. Oh, I know. It's like New Year's. It's like right after New Year's Day, like New Year's Eve, the whole New Year's Eve spill celebration and party and all that fun stuff. It just, and when New Year's Day comes, you're like, wow, it's the first day of the year. Right. Um, oh, wow. I got to go back to work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Reality sets it. Oh, wow. Credit card bills. Where'd you, where'd you come from? <laughs> Seven thousand dollars, honey. What'd you spend this money on? Yeah, yeah but yeah. it's been nice to have more family time, and I'm looking forward to it over the coming weeks. And I just, I really love this season. And regardless of what's happening outside of our household, I feel like during Christmas time, it's a time to pull close with family and spend time together and really connect and reflect on all of the blessings that we have in our life. And I love Christmas so much. And I think that part of that is because I think I have a very giving heart and like shopping for special gifts for people that have some type of special meaning really gives me a lot of joy. And with shopping, like you said, it's kind of tricky this year because all the stores are closed. And like I said, last night um, was Friday, Black Friday was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, sorry, night before I actually had to work Thanksgiving, which kind of sucks just a nature of the business that i'm in it's 24 7 like policemen firemen yeah so um while i was heading home from work i always drive by the big mall which happens to be by our house there's a big giant massive uh mall and every thanksgiving evening after work i would drive by the place and there would be so packed walmart parking lot packed with cars like right like three in the morning people waiting in line to get into Best Buy. It just, it's just like almost like it's the middle of the day, yet right. it's like three in the morning. Everybody's waiting to get in there. But 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 the other night, I drove by it, ghost town. I mean, right. nobody was there. Everything was closed. The only car in the parking lot was the security guard that like runs around the parking lot to make sure no uh, shenanigans are yeah. going on. But other than that, it was pretty much dead. Yeah, and I think that during this season, it's really easy to get into – a negative mindset. I know that people tend to get like the, they call it like the winter blues or whatever. And I think that with everything again happening outside of the households, there's a lot of negativity. And so, you know, you and I have been exploring some ways to bring in positivity into the world. Right? I love a good positive vibe. Positive vibes my way, baby. Send me your good vibes, positive vibes, all the fun <laughs> stuff. I love it. Yeah. And so that's no different than what we're bringing this week. Right, Chris? We absolutely are. We have a very special guest on this week who happens to be the what CEO of the Optimist Daily. Right. Now, what is the Optimist Daily, Christine? It is a solution-based news outlet that you can find online and on Instagram. And the CEO is going to tell us more about it, but it's definitely been a source of joy for me. So definitely listen to this interview coming up and stick around after because we're going to give you a fun recap of all of the wedding festivities from last week. Right, Chris? Woo-hoo. And we'll have Summers McKay on the show right after this. Hey there, K2 crew. We love having you as our loyal listeners. To keep up to date with what's happening behind the scenes, check us out on social media. Yeah, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter. And don't forget to follow our Facebook page. Yeah, tag us in your favorite fun stories. And guess what? You might just end up on the show. The Podbreed Network is strictly for the small podcasts that are up and coming in the vast world of podcasting. Podbreed is made up of many diverse podcasts coming together to achieve the same goal of being the best damn podcast network on the planet. 
find out more at podbreed.com. Okay, everybody, and welcome back. And today, we have a very special VIP guest who happens to be an author, an educator, and a CEO of a thriving online news platform. Please welcome to the show, Summers McKay. Well, thank you, Chris and Christine. I am so excited to be here. And thank you for calling me a VIP. I will wear that moniker all day. Everybody likes to be called a VIP, right? (laughs) Absolutely. Have you ever been called a VIP before or do we get to be the first? Well, I mean, I think I've bought tickets to, you know, events (laughs) that were called VIP tickets. And I'm pretty sure in the eyes of my 15 month old daughter, I am a VIP. But yeah, it, I, I would say it's the first in a while. So. Well, that, that's what really what counts, really, is it, does your child think you're a VIP? Your child can think whatever they want. You know, you can say uh, you're the best of the best and they'll, you know, they'll believe it. <laughs> you know? But in the eyes of a 15 month old, you are her source of life, the queen of her life. And I'm assuming little girl. Yes, yes. Oh, so so cute. Amazing. I, Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It has been a very fun adventure. Um, my my daughter came into the world the same week I was named the CEO of the Optimist Daily. So it has been a bit of a whirlwind these last 15 months uh, becoming a first time baby mom. I am very, very fortunate to have two children that came with my husband, but they were already a bit grown. So first time baby mom, first time media publishing CEO. It was a busy 15 months. I can only <laughs> and imagine. And add, add, on- in a, add in a pandemic and a worldwide team who all of a sudden had to be uh, remote and on Skype. So <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Well, kudos to you for staying above water and actually being having enough energy to join us today because it sounds like you have a lot on your plate. Well, you know, I think I think like most working parents right now, our worlds have changed so dramatically uh, during the pandemic. And for those those parents who are able to work from home, but also care for their children at home, uh, my husband and I had to take a pretty big leap of faith back in March when we pulled our daughter out of daycare because that was the right choice for our family. But that meant he and I split the days. And so I work in the morning and he works in the afternoons and evenings and we don't see each other much except for baby passing. (laughs) And but it, you know, when you have businesses that you love, and you have work that you love, and we are so fortunate and so blessed to have continued to have wonderful positions and, and places to work during this unprecedented time. So there's a lot to be grateful for in the busyness, but I, you know, this time change daylight saving situation did Ugh. mean that we were up at 4.30 a.m. And I have watched Moana already by 8 a.m. when I started work. <laughs> well, that is fa- that is fantastic. Now, you said this is your only child and your, your husband had children bringing into the uh, relationship. So what was that like blending a family? You know, I have, I, my whole life knew that um, I I wanted to be a mom. And uh, my personal mantra is that I help good things grow. And I love to garden. I love to garden businesses. I love to help children grow. So for me, it was a very, very exciting opportunity. And at the time when I joined the family, the children's biological mother was going through some health issues. So I was really able to step in and be there for them in a time frame when they They kind of needed that extra mom role because their mom was going through some serious uh, physiological challenges. And what's just been really beautiful is that time has passed. She and her health is, is, you know, much better and the kids get to spend time with both of them. So I like to call myself the bonus mom. And, you know, like every stepmom you know, you go through some challenging times, right? I had this sort of Mary Poppins belief that I was going to show up with my chore chart and we were going to sing and dance while everybody helped clean the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, reality hit and the kids looked at me like, what is your chore chart? Stop it. <laughs> so, um, but, but we, we all, at the end of the day, we all love each other and we all really respect each other. And so becoming, um, I have an 18 year old son and I have a 16 year old daughter and a 15 month old daughter. And I couldn't be more blessed to have a very big family. And the little one is just so deeply in love with her older siblings that um, it, it's just a gift every day. 
That's so awesome. And I love that you are called bonus mom. And that's what I prefer for the boys to call me too. Although yeah. Mason, our eight year old likes to test out the word stepmom, but he says it in the sweetest and most positive way. And he wears that like a badge of honor. He's like stepmom. Da, 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 da. He's, he called, he's called me that a yeah. few times. And, you know, they normally call me by my first name. But you know, it's definitely a unique thing blending families and all three of us definitely have that in common. Yeah, for sure. Well, you guys have shared so much about your story of recovering after pretty emotional um, ends of your relationships. And I actually wrote a blog a bit about my background. But when I was in business school, so at about the age of 30, 31, 32, I left my first marriage. And part of that decision to leave actually came when I was given the opportunity to attend business school at UCLA. And my first husband was not really in support of uh, me getting an MBA. He didn't really see the value of it. He had his MBA. He didn't understand why it was so imperative for me to get one. And that was just kind of a, an indicator that our relationship, among other things, relationships end for many reasons. But right. I had left that marriage and I threw myself into my education at UCLA. I was also leaving kind of a very dark time in the entertainment industry that I didn't feel good about. I was producing reality television that felt really icky and negative. Ooh. And uh, and so I, I went to business school. And while I was there, I wrote a blog about being single, divorced, and dating in business school. So I love the candid nature with which you guys share the evolution of your relationship. Well, thank you. Yeah, we try to be very real and transparent. We feel like it helps people connect with us a bit more. And, you know, speaking about that, you mentioned going to business school and blending a family. We'd love to connect with you a little bit more about your story and journey to the C-suite. Well, I have... Uh, oftentimes entrepreneurs are asked if, uh, you know, what was the breaking point or when did they know they were going to lead? I have known that I wanted to be a leader of impact since I was very, very little. And when I was in the entertainment industry, I had a about a 15-year uh, career that actually started with my first internship in, you know, in high school. Uh, in entertainment, because I've always wanted to be a storyteller. And I've always wanted to help tell stories that empowered and inspired the world. And I found myself very disconcerted, because as I continued in my career in entertainment, uh, I, I found myself being asked to tell stories in ways that were negative or hurtful to people. At reality TV became a very dark and manipulative area of business. There was also a really profound flaw in the business model because production companies were constantly going out of business and uh, it just didn't feel good. So I had a kind of moment of realization that I didn't want to do it anymore and I wanted to learn a better way and I wanted to prove that you could do good and do well in business. I wanted to help good businesses grow. And so I went to UCLA Anderson. Um, and at that time, I had a, a lovely experience of being able to really focus on my education. Um, I actually had a weird head injury <laughs> halfway through. What? And so I, yeah, I had a, I had a traumatic brain injury. I had a series of, uh, repeated concussions from really like nominal accidents that shouldn't have, but in aggregate, it basically meant that I had to go into full relearning mode and I had to learn to communicate again. And I've always been a good talker, but I was never great at math. And then I had this brain injury and I came out of it a total numbers whiz. No way. That's the cure. Yeah. Tell your kids, you just yeah. knock them on their head and then they can do math. No problem. Suddenly, corporal punishment is a math learning skill. But <laughs> no, uh, so but anyway, seriously, legitimately, like you came back and your brain chemistry yeah. had changed. It, and it, you know, basically your neuro pathways remap themselves. And, and this is part of the work that we do at Optimus Daily. Like, so when you have a traumatic brain injury, the, think of it as the highway, right? The highway to, from one destination to the other, both destinations still exist, but the pathway to get there has changed. And so like the ways in your head has to remap and recalculate, and remap and recalculate. And when it does, it fires up other pathways and um, it can open new channels, and so I went from literally being a failing mathematics student, like I failed, I almost failed statistics my first semester of business school, 
to having all A's in the math classes after my traumatic brain injury. Wow. And I attribute that to amazing tutors, but also because my brain was just ready to remap itself. And I liken that experience to you know, what What that did for me is it took me out of the position. And Christine, I think probably your work with um, Fierce Tears, you see this with a lot of women who they rise to a certain level within one area of a company, but they don't, they're hesitant to say, and I can do that too. Right. And it took me from being the quote unquote marketing girl to, yeah, and I'm the PL and I'm the data analyst and I'm the numbers girl. And I actually am the CEO. Yeah. That makes and a lot of sense. It was such a gift to have that. And so I, I taught at UCLA after uh, I graduated. I was an instructor and taught there for several years. I founded a strategic business program for undergraduates. And then when I met my husband, my now husband, um, because my students actually at the time put me on Tinder. Uh, <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> okay, we have to have oh, more of that. Yes, yes. In Please. the classroom, in what? the classroom, my students, because we were talking about my blog. I had written a blog while I was in business, the dating blog, Caution Curves Ahead. And we were talking about authentic leadership and that you can be transparent. You can talk about challenging things. You don't have to just be this buttoned up business personality to be an authentic leader. Well, the conversation went wildly off course with one of my students coming down, setting up a Tinder account for me in the middle, you know, in the lecture hall and everybody swiping right or swiping left on who they approved of. <laughs> um, Wait, did they all have access to your account? I mean, how'd that well, work? No, because we were just in the classroom. So she was doing it on screen, right? So everybody was like, yay or nay. You know, it was, it was kind oh of my funny. Gosh. Like, swipe right, swipe, you know, and it was, so the last thing in the world I thought was that, uh, you know, I was going to end up with a husband off of Tinder for my students, but I did. And wow. <laughs> it was brilliant. But once I left, uh, when, once I moved um, from Southern California, we were, I was in Los Angeles, Santa Monica area. I, I had to move up to the Central Coast area and uh, be with my husband. And so in order to do that, that meant that I did have to wrap up my teaching and education position at UCLA. I could no longer be there full time because this was before the world was remote. Oh, right. And of course, now I could probably run a business school from, you know, my athleisure, right. in my athleisure, sitting at my desk with baby <laughs> toys everywhere. <laughs> but uh, I ended up um, starting a consulting business and working with brands and helping small companies, giving them strategic growth uh, consulting and helping them grow their good businesses. And from that, several clients over the years had asked if I would come on board. And most of them, I just didn't feel as passionate about their businesses or I didn't feel the leadership match was a great match for me. But just before uh, I found out that I was pregnant with my baby girl, the Optimist Daily came along. And I fell in love. I fell in love with the mission. I fell in love with the fact that this business is both about solutions-based news, fact-based information, and it is also a opportunity to prove that you can do good and do well financially as a business. And so that is how I landed in the C-suite of the Optimist Daily. So for those who don't know, what is the Optimist Daily? Like, say, what is it? Yeah. So the Optimist Daily is an online platform. It's a media platform and news publishing entity. We have a daily email, sort of like the daily candy of positive news, right? So we send out uh, about 160,000 daily emails each week uh, to our subscribers who receive you know, either five or 10 positive news stories a day. We have a worldwide uh, editorial team who goes and scours the news for positive solution-oriented stories. And it's not just like, yay, the kitten in the tree got saved stories. It's did did real. that happen? Did that really happen? I, I want to know. Oh, I mean, of course there are like all the fluffy <laughs> animal stories, right? And I love all the fluffy animals. I know, Christine, you're not an animal person, but I love all the fluffy animal stories and the cats and trees that are always getting saved. But there are other stories that are about advances in medical technology, advances in green energy solutions, advances in policy making, representation, social justice that are not about the inflammatory dialogue that you see on mainstream media. But instead, you can really read tactical solutions every day. Now, 
we as a society are flooded with negative news. And certainly we are kind of in, you know, we're just coming out of the hazy days of this election cycle. And the intense emotional inflammation that is inflicted upon us by the news media, by mass media, and by social media is absolutely vile. And at The Optimist Daily, we know that it takes at minimum four positive thoughts to offset one negative thought, right? Really? So that is the math, right? And that's huh. those neuro neurotransmitters and pathways that we were talking about earlier. If you if someone says to you you're so smart, you're absolutely, you know, incredibly talented, what a great leader you are. I'm so proud of the work you do and I don't like your pants. Right. Well, they cancel does, each other what does, out. <laughs> what does that got to do with anything? But it's it's the whole idea, Chris, of one negative thought will counteract four positives. And so there's that need to fill your cup with even more positivity. Am I right, Summers? Exactly. That's exactly Exactly. So so I have a question about that, because as you mentioned, we're just coming out of this hazy election cycle. And we are we are recording this episode right in the um, I don't want to call it fallout, but the fallout of everything that's happening. There's still no clear direction. And I will be very honest. I was just communicating with a couple of my work colleagues the last three days since Tuesday have been very hazy and foggy and there's so much heaviness. And so as the CEO, how do you help your team decide what is worthy of including on your site Mm -hmm. that also doesn't silver lining everything else that's happening in, in the political realm? Right. Well, so solutions um, and optimism is not about rose colored glasses. Optimism is about action. And the way that I have worked to help keep my team's mental health through COVID and and part of why Optimist Daily has done so well during COVID is because our team has taken such measure to ensure that we are practicing what we preach. But the, the point that we address is that you must make, you cannot do anything about something that's just inflamed, right? Just inflammation, just information is not action. Information is power, but information and solutions go together to cause tactical positive outcomes. So for the rest of the world and so many of us who are deeply inflamed by all of the emotional experience of what's happening with the election, and if you watched a... uh, I'm going to try to say this without saying anything political... If you watch the news and you are for a certain candidate and you're watching a channel that is likely to lean toward that candidate on election night, that particular channel was more likely to be saying the other candidate was winning. So it was very fascinating. And and my husband actually took note to this. And he and I have disparate political values that he was watching his channel and his guy wasn't winning. And my other friends were watching our channel and their guy wasn't winning. And the simple fact is we are just being manipulated. And so encouraging media literacy and encouraging awareness of knowing when you're triggered, knowing when you're being pushed over and being able to step back from it and take on better practices. For me, on election night, I watched Little Mermaid with my daughter and made amazing food and we snuggled and played and practiced saying Sebastian. I never turned on the TV once because guess what? There is no action or tactical step that I could make to make a difference that night. But don't you want to see the uh, the winner? Like, don't you, aren't you curious? Yeah, but I'll see the winner when there's a winner. (laughs) (laughs) Good point. Very good point. And, you know, that's one of the things I noticed. And Chris and I have been um, really researching a lot about you and your company. And we were just captured by this positive outlook. But what we also noticed in the news stories is they're very different from an advice column. Because I feel like an advice Mm -hmm. column comes at you with a problem and then comes up with a solution. But right. what I read in the Optimist Daily and what Chris read in the Optimist Daily is that it starts with a positive story and a solution of how it's helping the world. It's not problem and then solution, which starts negative and then ends positive. And so is that something that your team does intentionally? Yes. Yes. And thank you for noticing that. So 
We are very careful about the language that we choose and the way in which things are framed. The editorial team does a masterful job at framing relevant news. So in uh, this election cycle, some of the things that we made time, we made editorial space to talk about were ways that you could participate in support or enhance the election experience, opening freedom of voting, not oh no, election's bad, we have to fix it. It's the ability to vote is an amazing thing. The ability to be an American and to live in our society is exceptional. And here's how we make it even better. And the positioning of any problem is one of opportunity. And that is really, you know, I'm kind of looking at some of our top solutions today, right? And we have a fun one. So our, our readers tend to love reading about mushrooms and not just the magic kind. So one of our headlines is Oregon becomes first state to legalize access to magic mushrooms. Yeah, I saw that. Right. So it's a great, fun headline. But what it is, is that it actually is talking about the expansive opportunity for medical treatment and antidepressants with psychedelic products. And so this is a you know, the the psilocybin psychedelic expansion that is currently happening is an advancement in medical technology. And the the synergy between what is grown in our earth and the natural pharmacological benefits of things that we can curate and we can grow and how it's actually helping people deal with depression and, uh, all, you know, all of the other physiological encumbrances that medical mushrooms can improve upon. So um, how is it that uh, you can stay positive, you know, with all the, in life, with everything going on in life right now? So we stay, well, I, um, I personally stay positive because I have an 18 year old, a 16 year old and a 15 month old for whom the world is going to continue and their lives are going to continue. And I pray that my 15-month-old someday is 42, sitting here having an enlightening and inspiring conversation with other like-minded, awesome VIP people. There you go. So our children and your children are what require optimism and positivity for me personally. That is something that I anchor to. I also take really serious measure about limiting my exposure to the inflammatory media. I'm very choosy about what I read and what I read as a consumer as opposed to, you know, the CEO of a news organization. And then I also take really, really good care to not uh, let myself go down rabbit holes. I also have a great therapist and I have a great coach uh, because it takes a village, not just to raise children, but to like be a person. It takes a village. Right. So those are some of the tactics I take on maintaining positivity. So I was wondering about that too, as you were talking about the the new legislation in um, Oregon and talking about being positive, it makes me wonder about you as a human. Are you tending to be a more empathic and empathetic individual? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I definitely, and I'm sure, you know, most it's the empathic CEO is like the riskiest CEO because we feel so much and sometimes you have to be a little cold. But empathy, I think, is a huge part of leadership for me and empathy for my team. And, and you know, one of the questions I get asked often is like, how is the Optimist Daily done so well during this time of pandemic? And a, a huge part of that comes from how my colleague, Christy Jansen, and I lead our team. Christy is the chief content officer, and mm-hmm. we lead with empathy. That is paramount to our leadership style. So that leads me to another question as it relates to that being um, empathetic and being the CEO is like, what would your advice be to the public right now as we've been all cooped up, (laughs) for lack of better terms? (laughs) Right. And there are so many people that are struggling financially, emotionally, and it just seems like it's getting to be a heavier and heavier and heavier burden just to live with any kind of positivity. 
What would your right, advice just be? To, just to slog through. Right. Uh, well, of course, my my first piece of advice would be to surround yourself with positive solution-minded thinkers. And if you are not, uh, you know, if you are in quarantine or you are, are not around a lot of your friends or, or colleagues who you, you might have spent time with in the past, I would say find yourself a like-minded group of people. Go on to the Optimist Daily Facebook page and, you know, follow some of the posts. Join our Instagram. There's lots of positive solution-oriented minded people there. Um, I would say limit uh, the amount of negativity you expose yourselves to. And if you find yourself with a friend or someone who really is going down a rabbit hole of negativity, let them know that you're making a conscious choice to try to be more positive. Because at the end of the day, our world is going to continue. There will be a November 7th and 8th and 9th and 10th. And we can't all be just in the doldrums. For those people who are undergoing tremendous financial stress, it is just, you know, I have had times in my life, many times in my life where I didn't know how I was going to pay rent and electricity in the same month. And it is the darkest feeling to not know how you're going to afford to pay for your children's, you know, care, let alone their electricity or the roof over their head. And I I would say, reach out to the community, even if it is through online conversations or through Zoom, reach out and ask for help or ask for guidance. Uh, There are solutions out there you might not even think of. And there are a lot of organizations who are working very hard to fill the need because there is a lot of need right now. There definitely is. And one of the things that I have noticed of my friends that are more empathic or empathetic and really put themselves in the feelings of others is they've struggled a lot because they are struggling with not only their own emotions, but taking on the hurts and pains of others. And so while you've shared about how people could get support, what would you say for those that are very empathetic? Okay. Well, there is a certain amount of, um, you can be empathic with boundaries, Right. Um, I, I once had a therapist tell me that, you know, Summers, you can have judgment without judging. And you can be empathic and have boundaries where you can feel and share and know that someone is going through it, but you don't have to carry the weight of their world on yours. And just being able to be aware of it and being able to be aware that your emotional reaction is to go down the rabbit hole with them. You know, do visualization. Uh, I had a, a spiritual guide once tell me to go hang out on the moon whenever she, whenever I found myself going down the rabbit hole with someone. And it's just a visual metaphor where you imagine yourself sitting on the moon and looking down with love and respect and kindness at those who are in pain, but not being with them. And huh. I think that is that gentle boundary where you can love someone without having to carry the weight of their pain. That's a really important lesson. I know that Chris and I discussed that a lot in our relationship because he might be having a really bad day or, you know, really struggling with something. And I'm a very empathetic person. And I'll take that on like, don't be mad at me. He's like, I'm not mad at you. (laughs) I'm I'm mad at the situation. Yeah, he'll say that all the time. I'm upset with the situation or I'm having a rough day. And I'm like, but I am the rough day. And so (laughs) that setting of the boundaries is so important. And I think especially when all of these other triggers are out in the world right now, whether it's pandemic related, politically related, work financially related, Um, It's definitely something to be super mindful of what you're filling your head with and who you're surrounding yourself with. That's true. Yeah, we did a webinar, uh, and I'm pretty sure it's available um, off the homepage of The Optimist Daily. But if not, you can search for it in our search tools. And it's an emotional inflammation webinar. We had some great experts coming on to talk with us about how to deal with emotional inflammation and the condition of emotional inflammation. So I think the whole video is available for download. Uh, uh, the experts were Stacy Colino and Lisa Van Sestren. And it was just a brilliant conversation led by my partner, Christina Jansen. So that's another tool that I would say is if you find yourself really inflamed, go take a look at that video and just spend, you know, an hour with Christy and, um, 
Stacy and Lisa, and you will have tools when you come out of that to lift yourself. You know what? That is a brilliant phrase that I have never in my life heard before. And it makes a billion percent of sense to me, the emotional inflammation, because I've so I don't know if I've shared this or you've heard this on the podcast, but I suffer with chronic migraines and that's a form of inflammation in the body. And so I have to take something to help bring down my inflammation. It's the same way when our emotions are inflamed or if we're finding ourselves in a really negative space is asking ourselves what the, the thing or the prescription is for ourselves for self-care to help us calm things back and, down. And I think a lot of people right now with being locked up in COVID, there's a lot of of that going on. People are, you know, in the house and they're cooped up and they have a lot of emotions built up and, and they're stressed out. Well, and even the best relationships are challenged during now and anyone we, you know, we've talked about this a lot on the Optimist Daily, but those people who are suffering from either toxic relationships or dangerous relationships, um, it really, a lot of that has come to a tremendous head during this time. And I think a big part of what we can all do as stewards of society is just make sure we are available and listening if anyone needs help. Yeah, that's very true. And because, you know, especially, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot, Chris, but okay. I feel that if you know this is speaking to the men or the fixers that are amongst That's us. That's right. I'm a fixer. You are a fixer. And whenever people are going through hurt or frustration, sometimes people rush in to try and rectify the situation, which can actually cause more trauma. But being an empathetic listener and just coming alongside is really helpful too. Yeah, absolutely. And so some of the things that you've developed in addition to being CEO of the Optimist Daily are designed to help lift everybody's spirits. What are some of those places where you include positive content for people to look to? So the Optimist Daily, we we joke that we publish everywhere. <laughs> so you can find us on Twitter uh, at Ode to Optimism. And that is, uh, Twitter is a dangerous place sometimes, but we are determined to be a voice of positivity on, on uh, Twitter. We are also on Instagram and a lot of our stories go into short form visual content in Instagram. Um, just search for Optimist Daily. Our Facebook page is rocking. We've got, you know, 100,000 plus people on it that are loving their Optimist Daily articles. You can also subscribe to the Optimist Daily. And every morning, if you are an emailer, you can get uh, in your inbox a daily digest, just, you know, daily candy of positive news. Ooh. And last but not least, you can get a conversation with myself and Christy Jansen. If you are looking for that little 15 minute boost, we do a 15 to 20 minute record every morning of our top five stories or of our top choices from the top 10 stories on the Optimist Daily. So uh, you can look for us, you know, all the podcast places. Just look for Optimist Daily Update with Summers and Christy. So Summers, I got a real quick question here. Now, you said uh, top stories of the day. Do you happen to have a top story of today you want to share with us? Yes. Uh, I am extremely excited that Sarah McBride just became America's first transgender state senator. Uh, I am delighted to see an expansion of representation and uh, in our state leadership. Before we began this conversation, we were talking about potential, you know, runs for legislature as, uh, um, you know, Right. As women. And I am just very excited. So this is that's definitely one of my top stories of the day. I also really, really love and I'm picking two. I know you told me to pick one, but I don't, <laughs> okay. I don't follow rules. Uh, I really, really love what we launched today, which is our Thankful Thursdays. And over the month of uh, November, we are doing Thankful Thursdays. We are working in tandem with an organization called the Lost Art of Love Letters and the Santa Barbara Response Network to every Thursday give a writing prompt. Uh, and it's basically thank you letters to the world. Thank you letters to people you love. Thank you letters to yourself. It's these writing prompts and it's a, a way of expressing gratitude that is actionable and meaningful and can definitely lift your spirits. So those are my top two today. I love that so much. And it's so funny that you mentioned that because last night I was going through um, photos on my phone of just random things. I think I was looking for something related to the wedding. And I came across a photo of a note that was sent to me by one of my very close friends and coworkers. And it just said, I'm thankful for you. Thank you for bringing so much beauty and light into my life. And I looked at it and I almost mm. cried because it's like, 
those things we don't get to say to each other as much. I mean, Chris and I say them to each other frequently, but we need to tell one another how much we are grateful and thankful for their presence in our lives. And sometimes it's as simple as writing a thank you note to them just for being alive. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, you know, that action of gratitude lifts both you and the person you're grateful for. I love that. And, you know, I've loved the stories. I do subscribe to the Optimist Daily across my social media channels. And especially on Twitter, I love the positive stories that pop up in the sea of less than positive news right now. (laughs) In the like vast wasteland of Twitter negativity. (laughs) Right. And yesterday it was such a perfect time. I believe it was yesterday when New Zealand elected one of its first indigenous women. Yes. Yes. And I looked at that and it was all about like women breaking through barriers in the midst of this election when everything else feels heavy. It's reminding ourselves of the wins because we're kind of distracted from that right now. And it helped me get regrounded. And so we want to thank you for bringing positivity and light into the world on a daily basis and also for being here with us today. Well, thank you so much for having me and thank you for what you're doing, continuing to share positivity and your commitment to keeping, to refilling up your cup. I really am grateful for you guys and and loved being in this conversation. Well, thank you so much, Summers. This has been a blast. The Derek Duvall Show wants to give a huge congratulations to the marriage of our favorite podcasting couple, Chris and Christine of the self-titled show. May they have many years of exciting adventures together and have the happy ever after they both so much deserve. You guys are awesome. Congratulations. Well, I loved that interview with Summers, Chris. How about you? Oh, that was great. I mean, they were all great. Summers was fantastic. You know, I haven't dropped a good old fantastic in a while. So, <laughs> uh, Summers, I give you a great old fantastic. Yeah, it was a very intriguing interview and I learned a lot about her industry and you know, I think it speaks to the type of person that she is to be able to focus an entire organization on focusing on positivity and bringing light and energy, positive energy into the world. That's great. We all need a great, we need positive energy. And I was listening to the part where she says she got had a brain energy, injury and it caused her to, her math skills went up. So I think maybe the kids uh, bring them on over here and I'll get a Hey, Mason, bring me that brick. No, and, um, Chris. Don't, don't ask questions. Just bring it over here and sit right there. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see if this works. You know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of the story. Do you remember the senator, Gabrielle Giffords? You're asking me this question? Well, senator or assemblywoman, I need to remember of her course. exact role, but she was in Arizona. Of course she was. And she had the head injury. I think it was. No, she got shot, remember? Right, but she had a head injury from it. And so they did a lot of work with her on helping her brain to rebuild connections. And it just reminds us how amazingly our bodies function to heal us. Well, yeah. I mean, it sounds like a big miracle in itself, you know, speaking of which. Right. So, uh, but she was great. And I loved having her on the show. And I say thank you, Summers, for coming on. That was great. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I loved hearing her story of her blended family, too. Didn't you, Chris? Yeah, of course. We have a blended family now. Because what is on my finger right now? I got my left hand up. You put, I put a ring on it. All the single, not ladies, all the single gentlemen. Put your hands up. Okay. Nope. Put your hand down. Oh, oh. You're not single anymore. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was my cue. No, no. <laughs> I got my hand up. I got my ring on my finger and it's like a power. It's like, I feel like one ring to rule them all. <laughs> Lord of the so rings. Funny. You are the Lord of the rings. You are Lord Christopher. Well, and I know. I got, I got a plaque that proves it behind me right here. <laughs> so uh, the wedding went off without a hitch. It was amazing last Friday. Yeah. Or fri- two Fridays ago. No, just over a, f- a week ago. Well, f- a couple Fridays ago. I am a officially mrs chris with a k oh, yes you are baby you are my sunshine you Aww. are the you are the peas to my carrots you are to the peanut butter to my jelly oh you're so sweet or well, something like that did you enjoy the wedding it was great but i was extremely nervous <laughs> getting dressed and i was like shaking and trying to get everything together i think i was more nervous because i had all the kids with me and trying to get them organized and settled. And well, but you had help. 
A little bit. Uh, you had a lot of help. No, well, your dad did help out a little bit. My with, dad with, helped out a lot. With Ezekiel. He helped out with all the boys. And I had the other kids and get them all together. And, and then he got all the boys in the car because you were like forgetting everything. I know I would forget this. I forget <laughs> that. I had to go back for this. Jacob's, oh, I, don't, I forgot that. I forgot my phone. I forgot blah, blah, blah. Or, or I forgot my mask or whatever it is. So um, get the kids loaded up. Then we start heading down there. And. We get down there, we park, and then we're early because it was weird because nobody right. was there. I'm like, did I come up to the wrong day? Nope. Is I it- had you be there 45 minutes early. And I'm like, where is everybody? So then the, uh, I guess the event people were there. The, uh-huh. Our the, coordinator. The coordinator. Mm-hmm. She was there. And the uh, the grounds dude was there, Chris. Mm-hmm. And they were there. And so we get out. Everybody gets in. We, they, I say, where do we need to be? Where do we need to go? So they took us in this little side area, courtyard room area next to a bathroom. And you were off doing your own thing. I think you already were there. And No, so- I came later. Oh, you weren't there yet? So no, we were- I snuck in after. Oh, so you were already there yeah. waiting around doing nothing? I put you on the timeline to make sure because you always run late. I wanted I you to be there early. I don't run late. I run on time. <laughs> no. I run on time to the exact second. That's, <laughs> nope. that's what I do. Nope. So anyways, you were like, if the wedding is at three, he'd be there at three. So I told you two fifteen when you really had to be there at two thirty. <laughs> oh gosh, women do that to you. They make sure that you're on time for something, <laughs> especially I'm, the wedding. <laughs> especially your wedding. It's right. Don't be late to that. She had a whole schedule written out, and it was like posted and printed everywhere. She had a copy of it <laughs> on the computer, a copy of it on my nightstand, a copy of it on the fridge, <laughs> a copy of it on my door, and a- my dad had it. And your dad had it too. It had every minute by minute. Chris, you got to be here this time. You got to get dressed at this time. You got to take a shower at this time. You got to get food this time. You got to get this here and there. So anyways. You make fu- it sound bad, but you said to me, tell me exactly what I need to do so that I don't screw up. <laughs> I, and I think because you did have everything bro- broken down in the time frame that you did, it did make me a little sketchy and a little more self-aware of what was going on with the, with the time and having to realize, okay, it's uh, 1035. I got to be doing this or it's this time I can do that. Yeah. And then I was like, I got this two hour block of time here to feed the kids and just hang out. And so I kind of, mm-hmm. that made me stress out a little bit too, because I did that and just relaxed. And then I couldn't really relax much on wedding day. In fact, <laughs> I couldn't even sleep the night before. Oh, really? That, that's true. I didn't sleep much at all. So Why? I, I was probably nervous. You know, it's very, it's a big day, you know? Yeah. It's a big day for me. I don't know if it's for you, but it's for me, it's a big of day. Of course it was a big day for me. So we finally get everything situated. They take us out to our little spots. We walk down the aisle. We get all set up. We get to the thing. And the pastor Jack was there. He was very nice. And he kept telling me, you got this. You got this. He gave me a little head, little fist fist bump or whatever <laughs> you do. And he says, you got this. You got this. I said, no, I'm so nervous, though. You know, <laughs> you should be a seasoned professional. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like your second marriage, for God's sake. You Is know? that what he said to you? I don't remember exactly. Nah. <laughs> Honestly, God, it was all a blur. I don't remember what he said exactly. It was like a big fog. But anyways, he was there. He was great. And we did the ceremony thing, and he very spoke very kindly of us and our story, and I thought it was great. Okay, but back up. Back you just up to went what? To, you went to, oh, we had the whole ceremony thing. I want to know, because you haven't told me, how did you feel the moment you saw me? Well, you didn't say that. I wasn't even there I, yet. I'm at, I'm at the part where we're just getting to the the altar, and I'm just like, they're like shaking. I'm like, sh- sh- sh-. you know, like that. It's like that scene from uh, Saving Private Ryan when they're about to go on the beach in the beginning of the movie, and, and like, the guy's like shaking. He's like, he has that canteen. He's just like shaking because yeah. he's about to be killed. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> to the aisle. I'm like shaking, like, oh my God, what's going to happen next? Oh my goodness. <laughs> no. So I walk up there, you know, and they do the thing. We do the vows. Oh, well, before, I'm sorry. Before you, before we did that, I saw you coming down the little sidewalk and around the corner because there's a little corner of bushes. And she walks around the corner to like the little makeshift little uh, runway thing. Or, or, uh, I like that, my runway. Mm-hmm. Run, runway. <laughs> and, uh, but, but well, I'm sorry, before that, I, I got to tell you guys about, about the kids. Yeah. The kids had their tuxedos on and they walked, um, who they walked down the aisle? My mom, your mom, and then, um, yeah, just that's it. And you you walked your aunt down the aisle. Right. So after they did that, they ran back around to go back down the aisle one more time. And as they came back, the musicians played 
the theme song to Mission Impossible. That's what the boys picked. And so they walked down the aisle, kind of strutting their stuff. and, uh, and Walking little, very fast, by well, the way. Yeah, and little Mason, he decided to like almost speed walk down the <laughs> aisle. And as he did, his little corsage falls off <laughs> onto the ground. He just walks right by it, you know, keeps on walking. And they stand up next to me. And then Christine finally comes out. And she looks amazing. And they play this very soft, nice music. It's a the, it's the music from the movie um what's it called the, the greatest showman the greatest showman it's the song called star what's it called stars rewrite the stars rewrite the stars yeah but on but harp yeah. and viol- yes, viol- viol- harp and violin live so they played it for us as christine walked down the aisle and she looked amazing of Aww. course all brides do uh it- don't diminish it okay. i'm your bride but you look the best thank you okay good and I had my big hair and my big lashes and my beautiful dress. And what did you think? I think you looked great. And at that moment, it was the moment I said, yes, I finally made the right decision. <laughs> you doubted it before that, you turkey? I was shaking and nervous, you know? I get all nervous. Oh, don't tell me that. So did finally, you really doubt it? Well, no, but I was just like, uh, I think the whole time I was thinking like, don't screw this up. Everybody's oh. watching you. You got all the kids to wrangle. I think the thing was the very first wedding, I was nervous too, but I didn't have kids to worry about at the same time. Um, in, you know, making sure they didn't uh, do anything dumb and stupid and they didn't screw things up. Or, right. Or wh- wh- where's Mason at? Why? Mason, get your shirt back on. What, <laughs> what are you doing? We got to get on the altar in five minutes. Your, your shoes aren't even on. No. You know? it, it's like, because you know when you load the kids in the car, right. they're always like, you got to go back. Where's your mask, Mason? I don't know where it is. Jacob's like, I can't find my phone charger. I don't know where it is. <laughs> they're like, Jacob, go, oh, go pull okay, the car back in the driveway. you saw me. You looked great. You looked great. So you come down. We do our thing, do the vows. Pastor Jack was very nice. Mm-hmm. He did his whole thing. It was great. And then we walk off. And But before we did, in the middle of our ceremony, our little surprise was able to go off without a hitch. And Paisley, our little tiny tortoise, was able to make her debut in her little convertible de- Bentley and her tutu. And she was our ring bearer. And she brought down the rings in the little remote control car that my niece uh, controlled to get her down the aisle. And that was one of my highlights. You know, little Paisley had been so sick and like so, so sick. And right. we were been able to nurse her back to health and are just so happy that she's doing so much better. You know, and, and the funny thing was is that that it's like cobblestone um, walkway we were on. Yeah. And the car, it's like a remote control car. So it needs kind of to be on the most smoothest surface, really. So as it went down the aisle, it's like bouncing, like boom, boom. I'm like, oh no, she's going to fly out of the yeah. <laughs> Out of the thing. But my niece saw that and she like slowed it down a bit because they practiced before you and I came out. They practiced with the car with Paisley. And oh, so okay, I think okay. she just got excited and was like, hit it a little too hard but, accelerator a little too much but on the, on she the was so great and paisley looked so cute and she got to be in all of our pictures and, uh, and then we did all the pictures and then we went down to the to the ocean where because because we did this by the beach over here and by the sunset cliffs and they yeah. had these whole cliff shots we did and pictures and then after that we had the reception in yeah. the backyard at the house here and, and what did you think when you saw everything decorated according to my vision? It looked amazing. It made the backyard look like an inside like um, canvas with lights and a chandelier. Yeah. Full on like festivities thing. It looked great. I thought it looked great. Yeah. It was my absolute dream. I had envisioned it and sketched it out and I'd been working with the coordinators and all of the people with the rentals to sketch out exactly what I wanted. I had very detailed lists for them. We walked through everything multiple times in advance. And then I left the house uh, before the rehearsal dinner and went and checked in at the hotel and then met you at the rehearsal. And then we went to the rehearsal dinner. And then after I picked up Paisley um, after dinner, I didn't come back here. And you, I, you were like wanting to show me everything at nighttime the night before. And I didn't want to see it because I wanted to be surprised. And I'm so Were glad. you surprised? Oh my gosh. I was in shock that this fairy tale vision that I'd come up with in my head in only 10 weeks, mind you, we turned this around from the Hawaii dream wedding to having our backyard beautiful micro wedding in 10 weeks. And 
in full execution, it looks like we had been planning that wedding for over a year. Oh, oh wow. Really? Well, it only goes to show you what you can pull off when you put your mind to it and right. a little motivation, a little dedication. And I think that's what we did. We had to... Uh, we use we uh, use the front yard and the backyard. Yeah, front yard was cocktail hour and taco truck and drinks and the drinks and had a bartender set the up. Bartender a, was in the back. Yeah, we had a valet service coming in, so you can come in, drop your car off, and you're good to go. And we had three guys running that show, and they had the cones and lights. They're great, and the whole thing was amazing. I think the wedding was fantastic, best wedding I've ever been to, and not including. And in fact, it was just just my wedding, <laughs> or say our wedding, but uh, best wedding hands down. And then we were able to go away on a mini honeymoon, right, Chris? To Coronado Island. Oh, my gosh. It was just spectacular. Over the bridge at this little bed and breakfast inn called the 1906 Lodge, Lodge yeah. in Coronado. And it's this cute little, like, uh, courtyard bed and breakfast, like, place. And the, and the room was great. It had a big bed. It had a jacuzzi in the room kind of a thing. Like a huge jacuzzi tub. Fireplace. It had a uh, balcony and coffee, and they had a uh, happy hour, free drinks, and they had uh, a free hot breakfast in the morning. Right. Bottomless mimosas. There you go. Woohoo. Fantastic. And then we even oh. got to rent a golf cart and we took it around on an adventure for the afternoon yeah. around Coronado. In Coronado, you're, it's legal to drive golf carts around the island. Right. Like on the streets and stuff. And trust me, we did that, and I gave it all she got. <laughs> All 20 miles of that thing, you know, but it didn't go very fast. But it was fun just cruising thing around, you know, and um, we went on one side of the island and we had coffee. We walked around. We took a lot of pictures. We bought some cupcakes and then we went to the other side and we had lunch at the Hotel Dell, which is the really famous hotel. And it's super expensive. And we thought about staying there, but it's been under construction. And so we found this other. And they did not lower their rates right. due, due to construction. They're just the same old prices, but we're cutting this out and that out. And there's a guy who has a jackhammer next right. to your room next to you. <laughs> Don't mind him. So we found this other lodge. It's a Four Sisters resort, which is the company that owns it. And it was, it was amazing. And thank you, Chris, for splurging on all of the special little things for well, me. Well, you're welcome, babe. The roses in a vase in champagne, the room. Bu- champagne, chocolates, like all the face masks and bubbly bath stuff. And I walked in and cried because there was a little rose petal heart on the bed. And oh, you're welcome, babe. It was, it was everything, everything from the wedding, like all I wanted was to marry you. And then everything else on top of it just made it like we were able to escape the pandemic and have a real wedding celebrating with our closest family and just having such a glorious time. And, you know, we were definitely safe. We had all the social distancing protocols at our ceremony and at the reception. We seated appropriately and I am just so grateful to you for going along with my vision, honey. I'm just, I, I'll, I I'll, it. I'll go with you wherever you go, babe. I am, you, um, you're mine and I'm yours. And I think that I will follow you to the end of the world. Oh, thank you. And how has married life been with me for the past week? Let me tell you, it feels so different. <laughs> Does it? Girls look at me differently now. They're like, oh, man, dude, I, <laughs> I, I can hear the sounds of broken hearts. <laughs> Across the city. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Everywhere I look. Because he's off the market for good, ladies. I know. Ladies are like, oh. It's like crying. You know, one girl looked at me and started crying you know, <laughs> as she walked by me. I said, what? What I do? And then and she whipped and another girl started crying. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry, ladies. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know. Well, I love you so much. And Aww. I'm so happy to say that I'm officially Mrs. Chris with a K. And that, you know, this this whole journey of podcasting are everybody's been able to kind of walk along the majority of our relationship with us. I'm really excited to turn the corner into this next chapter of being newlyweds and, and really blending our family. Oh, me too. It's just super exciting. And it's just really exciting to do all this. It, it, it's, it's been great. I mean, we've been married for like what a week. Uh, Yeah. Eight days, <laughs> eight, eight days. We have been married for eight whole days, everybody. <laughs> So, I mean, we're almost there. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I'm just going to keep focusing on, you know, the something we were about to get into a little friction yesterday. And I found myself stopping and saying, like, in five minutes or in five hours or in five years, is this even going to matter? And then I just was like, dropping it felt so much better. And you you wanted to pick it back up. And I was like, can we just not? 
can we just like not fight about anything? And you were like, okay. And I felt so empowered in that moment to just be like, let's focus on the fact that we've worked so hard to get here for each other and that I just treasure you and I treasure this what? marriage. I and- treasure me too. <laughs> But I, I do treasure you, though, too. A little. Not, not much as me, but, oh, but, you, but you too. I do. I do. I do. Oh, come I on. I, I said I do at the wedding. Did you hear me? I, I said I do. I know. I think I said the wrong thing because he asked Wait. us a question and I said, I will. Because I thought that there was a point in the... Did you say I think about it? Or you said no, it? I thought that in the vows, there's a time when you say I will and then a different time you say I do. And so I said I will instead of I do. So we're not official? <laughs> What? Hey, we ladies. Are. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we almost weren't official because I forgot to put the fifteen dollars check in the envelope and the pastor. No, that was not for the. That was that just was for get, our marriage license. No, that was just to get a copy of it. I know, but I couldn't be official you, without no, that because you have no. to take that to go and get you your do? name changed. You do. Yes. Oh. To be able to well, be Mrs. Chris with a K. I mean, oh, what do I, I know? I yeah. mean, I'm officially that, but to be able to go into the Social Security office and say, yes, I'm married. I'm Mrs. Chris with a K. Can you please officially change my name? Yeah. To okay. queen of all podcasting. Oh, then, yeah. you, you are my queen, babe. And you're, uh-huh. you're the queen of this podcast. And the queen of your heart? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you are horrible today. I'm, are you just seeing what you could get away with? 100%. It's all about being married. Oh, it's, it's like married life for you. It's what? like, let me see how much rope I can get before you hang yourself with it. Yes, definitely. <laughs> You're feisty today. Well, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in with us this week. We are going to enjoy our first Saturday night as a blended family with all five of us together. And we hope that... Listening to the great interview by Summers has been uplifting to you and that you will definitely hop on over to their social media channels at The Optimist Daily and subscribe and fill your mind with solution-based news. Right, Chris? Absolutely. And if you want to find out more about us, you can always find us on all these social networks and whatnots and the ups, downs and sideways and the face, face faces and the face face <laughs> and all that stuff. But you also can go to our website, which is show. Dot com. And that's Chris and Christine with Case. And we will see you guys next week. Remember this week that life is too short to wake up in the morning with regret. So love the people who treat you right. Forget about the ones who don't and believe that everything happens for a reason. If you get a chance, take it. If it changes your life, let it. Nobody said that it would be easy. They just promised it would be worth it. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Chris. And I'm Christine. And until next week, keep moving forward. <laughs>